myself a little more room here without letting these over so that the queen can go at the back. We're putting an empty bar in between all these, these last two drawn ones. Lifting it up. Doing a little wiggle. And now we'll put the queen. Anybody have any questions? I had a question. Okay. You said it's just one intruder, like one intruder from somewhere else comes into the hive that, that can mess up the whole thing. Yeah, well, it can, if, like, see, because when we were making our splits yesterday, we made these two in, a, in like, close proximity to each other. And I also was finding a queen from another hive from a guy who came to buy it. So there was a lot of activity happening, and it's very possible that these from another hive went into the hive and like were co-mingling and that there was some kind of confusion when it all was being, you know, brought down. If one bee landed on the queen and started having some ferocious communication, it can confuse everybody. So right now I'm not going to make too much out of it. I don't know. It's all speculation. But seeing that, that level of intensity with what, how they are around her, I would never release a queen like that. I would always wait until I see them calm around her. So it's a good thing for you to see like what to look for because a lot of people may just not even look at the queen or pay attention to that and just release and then, oh, I don't have a queen anymore, I don't know what happened. Well, they probably stung her. So it's just good to pay attention to what's going on there. I'm putting in a spacer strip. for the top bars to all be really snug so that the beetles can't just climb around. These are the only ones you got though, huh? Oh yeah, that's like a little piece of wood that might work. I got it. It'll fit. Sometimes it just takes a little finesse. But even though it was like a small gap, you see, it was still pretty important for me to put it in there because it's the more open spaces, the more likely you could have little beetles crawling around and creating trouble. So we really want to make this easy for bees to defend themselves. And always with this box, I have the few, like 10 dead bees in the bottom that tried to push their heads through. So if you see dead bees in the bottom, that's what it is. It's like the bees that just go, I want help so bad, I'm gonna get stuck. Right now we're going to let these bees come down to join their family. If you go like this, the dead bees just fall right out. Yeah. That way you don't have to shake dead bees over the beehive. And then you also want to look for small hive beetles. So for me, I'm going to go around here and look. And you haven't seen those yet today. Let me see if I can find one to show you in person. Here the bee is wrestling with it. I don't know if you guys can hear this. That's the small hive beetle. See, they're small. They're not, not too big. Those kind of look like a chick. They lay eggs on the brood and pollen and honey, and they turn it into a, that slimy maggot goo, like we saw in the video. And it's kind of funny, you know, if any of you are into games like Where's Waldo or anything like that when you were a kid, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of fun, like, just finding these little buggers that are hiding it out. Now I really want all these bees to grow up and join the rest of the hive. So before I shake them more, I'm going to give them a chance to go up on their own. How do they get in? The entrance. And now that we've all had fun seeing them get set up, we're going to close these doors. And it's always important that the windows are left closed when you're not using them. Because otherwise, the bees can really get messed up. They'll propolize the whole window because too much light comes in. So make sure for all your residents here, they know if you want to go see the bees, Make sure you close your window. So
so let me go ahead and get these bees to a place where I can put the roofs on and we can kind of feel this is done and then we can all gather together and bless up these beehives here. So there's a couple of different ways you can get bees to move. I have a tendency of wanting to do this, <laughs> but uh, that's not always the way that they respond pleasantly to. <laughs> Well, I mean, you prefer to brush them with your hand than a brush? Yeah, the bees get stuck in the brushes. That's why they get aggressive. So if they get stuck in the brush and you're just brushing and brushing them, that can really create a negative reaction. Especially okay. if it gets honey on it. It's yeah. Like... It gets sticky, it's stuck, it hurt. Not fun. Have you been stung since this demonstration? No. No, if I would have gotten stung, I probably would have showed you how to take the stinger out. You would have said something. I'm not sure I want to demonstrate it on my own today. This is a worker bee. Yeah, and her stinger is right there. But notice she doesn't even have it out. Like I'm like right there. She's not even trying to sting me. So she really doesn't want to hurt you. She has these little mandibles right at the tip of her mouth where she can pinch. So sometimes when people think they're getting stung, they're actually being bitten by those mandibles and pinch you. And she has a proboscis, which if I just had some yummy honey on my finger, she would try to taste me, but she's not trying to taste me right now. So, let her go. Bees really got to have a reason to want to sting because they're going to die. And as you can see, like even me picking them up and moving them around, as long as they don't feel threatened, they're not aggressive. So it's really all about, uh, Kathy I think it was, who asked me earlier, how did you get to that place? Uh, energetically, I'm just reminding them and myself every time I'm here that they we're not aggressive, we're friends. You know, I'm coming as a family, here to help. And I feel received that way, I feel like they know me that way. So I am a big fan of apotherapy. Yeah. Big I fan. I that I get stung on my hands regularly and I have some how do you make them sing? Well, it's kind of funny actually. You cup them, right? For me to get a bee to sting me, I usually try to take the medicine where they want to get it. But in order to do apple therapy for someone else, I actually would have them mark the spot that they want to get stung. And then I would put the bee on the spot, and I'd hold her there. And they often don't want to sting, just like right now. She doesn't want to sting. So I may even have to like hold her down. Oh, there we go. So now I actually got her to sting. To really get the full medicine, I want to try to let her pull it off on her own. Now it's in me. Now I want to try to get the stinger out without breaking it off. You can use a card, you can use a tool. Yes, it hurts. So after being a beekeeper for over seven years and getting stung in my hands all the time, I'm not getting the same medicine that I might have noticed when I first started. I've got all these little red marks on my fingers that are sting scars just from this week. So the fact that it, I'm kind of numb in my fingers to it. I think it would be great if we could join a circle and gather together to really bless up this thing. I really like to do most ceremonies where we end in an ohm, and three ohms are usually pretty great. Um, but since we're buzzing, I think maybe in this one we could hum the first one buzz the second one, and ohm on the third. Y'all into that? Yeah. Okay. Mm.